In these next several videos, we're gonna be taking a look at several of the luminosity mask creation tools. And in the last video, we're gonna to try to figure out which tool is right for you. Before we get started, just a couple of disclaimers. First of all, everyone edits differently. And just because I prefer one tool or one feature over another does not necessarily mean that you're going to feel the same way. We all have different workflows. We all work differently, differently, and some tools will work better for different types of users. In this video, we're going to be focusing in on TK Actions. So TK Actions from Tony Kuiper has been around the longest of all the creation tools. Tony Kuiper literally invented using luminosity masks. So it's impossible to talk about luminosity masks without giving homage to Tony Kuiper. Without his hard work, none of these other tools would even be possible. Luminosity masks can be created without the aid of these tools, uh, but it's far more tedious. Let me show you how you even create them. So if you go into your channels tab, you have your RGB, your red, your green, your blue. And if I hold down control and click RGB, it gives me marching ants here. That means that I have just selected uh, my first luminosity mask. If I save that luminosity mask as its own channel, we have a lights one layer. And now from here, we can further refine it. If I go hold down control shift alt and then click on it again, it refines it a little further, click it on it one more time and then save that. We have a more, a more restrictive luminosity mask. I can do the same thing a couple times, create another one and we have another luminosity mask. If I wanted to create a luminosity mask that's going to hone in on the darkest tones, go back to my alpha one, hold down control, click on it, save it as a new channel, and now I can invert that. And now our selection is going to hone in on the darkest tones of our image. And then you can go through and do the same thing. Click on it a couple times, save it. It's more restrictive, save it. Um, do it, click on it a couple more times, save it. And now it's only it's only honing in on the darkest tones of our image. That's how you create luminosity masks without these tools, but it's so much faster and easier. It is well worth the 35 bucks or 40 bucks in some cases to spend on these luminosity mask creation tools because they don't only create the luminosity mask, but they do lots of other things. Let me show you TK Actions 5. Okay, so this is TK Actions 5. There is three different luminosity creation tools here, these tabs. There's the control panel and there's the actions panel. Uh, the cool part of this is that it's like a total workflow solution where you can pretty much go through and hit no buttons other than just what's in here. You'll never have to go into your menu or very seldom will you ever have to go into your menu. You can create all kinds of adjustment layers and dodge burn layers and all kinds of stuff just from these buttons and tabs. The whole thing is meant to speed up your workflow. Let me show you how these different tabs work. First, I'm gonna go in here and deselect my channel here and we'll click on RGB. Okay, so first of all, there's TK intro. This is like the most basic um, luminosity creation tab. Basically, it's very similar to what TK Actions 4 looked like in some ways. You can uh, just hit your loom lock button and then all of these luminosity masks will be created instantly for you. So you can cycle through your lights, one, two, three, four, five, or you can go through your darks. You can even select midtones, which will ignore your brightest tones, ignore your darkest tones. Very useful or for adding contrast. That way you don't blow out highlights and block up your shadows. You can even create selections based on uh, the zone system, like Ansel Adams zone system, and go through here and you got one through 10. It's very simple. Uh, and it's very basic. Then there's the rapid mass tag, a tab. This is the one that I find myself using the most often when I'm using TK actions because it's very powerful and it does most of what you need as far as luminosity mass creation. It, it actually does everything that you need. Um, so you, it's works the same way. You have to create your composite. Uh, 
which is basically creates your first luminosity mask and then it can create all of its future luminosity masks based off of that loom lock channel. So now when I cycle through these, they're created instantly and you can select, make your selections very fast. One of the features that I really like in this uh, rapid mass tab is that, um, let's say I have a selection here, like our midtones, where our most selected areas are not 100% selected. They're still gray, which means that they're not fully selected. What I can do is just click the A button here, and that's going to add a whole bunch of contrast to this particular selection. That way, the most selected areas are going to be even more selected. Each one of these tabs has what they call the infinity button, which is just a fancy term for a levels adjustment. So, for example, if I create a midtones 2, I can create a, I can hit the infinity button, and now I can alter that layer mask to hone in on only the areas I want to affect. Also, you can create your selections based on the red channel, the green channel, or the blue channel. You can even create them based on saturation. So um, when I click saturation, now I'll be able to cycle through and hone in on only the most saturated or only the least saturated areas of a photo. Very powerful, very useful. The layer mask tab, what it basically does is it, it it gives you a instant preview of what that luminosity mask is going to do. So rather than giving you a preview of what things look like currently, it's going to show you what your adjustment is going to look like once that that luminosity mask is applied. With the, the control panel, I'll create a new levels adjustment. And on this levels adjustment, I want to darken down. And obviously that does not look good applied to the whole image, but if I cycle through, I create my composite and I only allow it to enter the lights. When I turn this off and on, you can see that um, it's darkening down our lights. I can even do it a little bit more extremely. And now I can cycle through the different lights and see how each luminosity mask will affect that adjustment. I can go to my midtones, only allow it to uh, affect the midtones and we can end on lights one and decide that that looks good. A nice way of cycling through your adjustment or cycling through the different luminosity masks and instantly see how that adjustment is going to be applied. Um, it's worth stating though that you can, this rapid mask tab will actually do the exact same thing if I hit auto apply. So with auto apply um, selected, I can hit composite and now I can cycle through my different luminosity masks and it'll give me an instant feedback as to how that's going to look. That's the layout and the style and the, the way that the three different luminosity mask creation areas work. But there's also the control section and the action section. Um, of these two, I find myself using the action sections the most. Um, so the control section, it basically has a button for everything you could possibly want. Like, let's say I wanted to change my canvas size. I click on the canvas button and boom, it's right there. No need to go up into my menu. Let's say I wanted to create a, let's say I have a layer here, a new layer. And I want to change the blend mode quickly to soft light. I hit that button, it's in soft light. Or I can go to color, overlay, hard light, multiply any any number of things there's uh, buttons for new layer duplicating layers deleting layers a new dodge burn layer hit that button it creates a new layer set to overlay really really useful stuff and so in the real world the way this this kind of stuff would be used is i would go up to my rapid mask i would select a lights one i would go down i would select it by hitting select and then I would go down and I could create a dodge burn layer and then apply it. So now I have a dodge burn layer with that lights one applied. And now wherever I paint, it's only going to allow me to paint into the brightest tones there. So if I select a nice bright green, I can go in here and start to dodge burn, dodge and burn some of my foliage and stuff like so, and it's not going to allow me to go into the darker areas because we have this luminosity mask applied to it. 
Down here in the actions tab, there's some really, really useful stuff. One of the features that I find myself using all of the time with TK actions is the web sharpening section. Web sharpening section is excellent. It's a great addition to any workflow. Um, so I always export using the web sharpening section of TK actions. Basically what it does is it blows your image up add sharpening and then decreases it down to the um, to the exact export size that you want it to be. So with Facebook, Facebook prefer, prefers 2048 pixels. So I can go and I can say how much sharpening I want. Let's say I want 65% opacity on my sharpening layer. I want an extra sharp and then I'll hit vertical because it's a vertical shot. Now it's going to do that resizing and then put it onto its own file. So now we have a completely different file here and it gives me a hundred percent preview of it and it's got this sharpening applied inside its own group. If this was a shot that had a very strong horizon line, some mountains, a lot of times you'll get over sharpening halos. And what's cool about that is since our sharpening is inside a group, I can just add a new layer mask and then select black and go in and decrease the sharpening anywhere that I feel like I'm getting halos. Um, this shot doesn't have it, but super useful for those shots that do have that. Um, and then I can go and say, okay, well, I need to add my watermark. You can save your watermark actions uh, as one of these buttons. So I have number one as my watermark button. I can grab it, reposition it, put it there. And then when I'm ready to export, there's a save for web button. So no more going up to file, save for web. I just hit that button. And <clears throat> notice that down here, there's a sRGB click or checkbox. I have that selected. So it's going to convert from pro photo, which I'm editing in to sRGB. So my colors are accurate. I'm gonna hit save for web. And then I can go through and save my image, blah, blah, blah. So super, super powerful. I really, really like the actions tab. I find myself using the frequency separation all of the time for uh, my portraits. Um, there's some nice Orton effects and glow effects that you can do. Plus, if you can get used to the icon layout, which is the kind of the trick to this, um, you can really speed up your workflow because everything you want is just right here. If I want a, a curves layer, boom, hit that and it creates a curves layer. If I want a levels adjustment, boom, there's a levels adjustment and so on. Dodge burn layer. If I want to delete that layer, hit the, do the delete button. Um, lots of lots of really useful stuff. So the pros are to TK Actions. TK Actions is the most powerful of the different luminosity mass creation tools. It's not just great at creating luminosity mass, but it's a total workflow streamliner. If you can get used to the layout and get used to where the different buttons are, it's going to speed up your workflow guaranteed. It's just nice to have all of that in one place. The downsides. When you look at it, it looks a bit like a scientific calculator. There's lots of colors, there's lots of buttons, and when you're first learning luminosity mass, it's very intimidating to look at. I would say that TK Actions is great for the power user that is familiar with luminosity masks and can get used to this layout. Secondly, I feel like it takes up a whole lot of space on my, on my Photoshop uh, screen. Uh, you pretty much in order to work streamlined, you have to have it all open at the same time. You could put them into tabs next to each other. Like I have the different layer mask or uh, uh, luminosity mask creations, but then you have to switch between them once you make your luminosity mask selection. So having them all open at the same time is the fastest way to go. It just takes up a lot of space. Secondly, or thirdly, I guess, um, the, the videos that are almost mandatory to learn this thing are not free. You have to pay for them. Granted, they are excellent, excellent videos from Sean Bagshaw, uh, who is an excellent, excellent teacher, but they're not free. So you're going to have to pay for that. So if you're a power user that doesn't mind spending the extra for the videos and you like the look of this layout, I think this one's going to be for you. It's very, very powerful. It does everything you could possibly want. Make sure you check out the next couple videos. We're gonna be taking a look at Raya Pro, Instamask, as well as Lumenzia. Check out those videos and we'll see you in the next one.